Hello, Sebbies, aka Sub Atreyuans, aka subscribers to the Sub Atreyu channel. So, today I'm back with another Ask Atreyu video. Today's question comes from Kimberly Scrobel. Hopefully, I got the pronunciation down right. It says, Hey, Sebby. Oh, that's so cute. It's a newbie mistake. She thinks that I'm Sebby. <laughs> Hey Subby, I am a new subscriber and so happy to find you and your awesome spirit and experience. Can I also ask your advice? I have very long, very loose coils that I just plaited two days ago to start locks. I plan to wash, separate, palm roll to encourage the braids to eventually become round and then air dry. I know to expect shrinkage, but do you think it is okay to put my hair into a loose bun once it is dry and wear that style most of the time. My new braids are almost at my waist and I teach beach yoga full time so I can't have that flapping around and the beanie would fry me. I am afraid of creating weak flat squished bits even though the updo would be very loose and not cause tension to edges. What is your take on updos on starter locks? Are bobby pins, hair bands, etc. the devil? Thank you so much. Thank you, Kimberly Scrobel, for the awesome questions. All right, so let's just get right into it. Let me go back and see if I can find the first question. Well, you say, can you ask my advice? Clearly, since I'm making this video, yes, <laughs> uh, you can ask my advice. Okay, do you think it is okay to put my hair into a loose bun once it is dry and wear that style most of the time? Yeah, I think that that is perfectly fine. When your hair dries, then it's less malleable. Meaning, say you were to do a fresh wash and then you squoze all your locks into a bun. I think in that case, because your hair is still wet, it would be more malleable. And I know you said later on in the comment that you didn't want like flat or squished locks right well because you allow them to dry thoroughly before putting them up in a bun I don't see that being an issue for you and you said it's also a loose bun so as long as there's not too much tension being applied to your scalp you should be fine you said my new braids are almost at my waist and I teach beach yoga full time so I can't have that flapping around and a beanie would fry me. You know, I always wonder about beanies because as you know, I'm someone who wears Tams quite often and my Tams, I wear them during the summer as well as, you know, during the winter and I don't really get hot. And I also have a satin bonnet up under them. So I'm just curious, have you actually try to wear a beanie to test whether or not you would get hot. If not, you might want to try that because I think that's a slightly better option than having it up in the bun because your locks can be a little bit freer. But if you have tried the beanie and you do get hot, then yeah, I think the bun would be okay for you. Uh, you said, I'm afraid of creating weak, flat, squish bits even though the updo would be very loose and that cause tension to edges. So yeah, as I said before, as long as there is no tension to your scalp. You should be fine. You shouldn't have to worry about traction, alopecia, or thinning. What is your take on updos on starter locks? Well, for me, I didn't do much, right? Granted, I didn't have waist length hair either for starter locks, so clearly I wasn't combating the same challenges that you're having to deal with, right? For me, personally, I just kind of like to not do anything. I was that way at the beginning of my lock journey and three years, five plus months later, I'm still the same way, which is why you guys have never seen me with like a style or anything. So, um, you know, I'm very minimal in that respect, but I do acknowledge that people have different situations that they're working with and you have to do what's his best for you. <laughs> and then you said, are bobby pins, hair bands, etc. the devil? I don't necessarily think so. I mean, I think with bobby pins, you have to be careful because when you insert them into your hair, if it's penetrating the lock, then there's the potential to maybe develop small holes. And if you're doing that constantly over time, it might create weak spots 
in your dreadlocks. Did I say that right? Weak spots. <laughs> Sounded weird to my own ears. Yeah, it might create weak spots in your dreadlocks over time if you're constantly essentially puncturing your dreadlocks. But I think with like hairpins, especially there's they're wider, right? They don't start close like bobby pins. And so you might be able to manipulate those a little bit better to put in your hair and maybe you can like maneuver them in such a way that they're not necessarily going into the dreadlocks, but maybe, you know, just going around the dreadlock, if you know what I mean. Like this is a dreadlock and this is the hairpin and just doing that to hold the lock or locks in place versus going in there, you know? So I don't, I wouldn't just say that they're automatically the devil. It just depends on how you, how you use them and where you insert them. And then lastly, hair bands. Hair bands, yeah, they, they get a bad rap because they usually lead to tension, especially when you use them the same way frequently. Like if you always have your locks back with the hair band and it's super tight, then your hairline will oftentimes start to recede because just imagine someone <laughs> grabs your hair and they're pulling it. Day after day, you have this person <laughs> that's pulling on your hair. You know, it's pulling on your follicles and that tension, that consistent tension is going to eventually do damage. So just be careful. There are hair bands out there that do not apply as much tension, but once again, I'm very minimal, right? So this Tam Satin Bonnet, well, I don't have a Tam on right now, but imagine me if I had a Tam, that Tam Satin Bonnet combo. If you guys are wondering, I have a Satin Bonnet on. <laughs> but the Tam Satin Bonnet combo, it works for me and there's no tension whatsoever. So it's just been the best option for me. But once again, I acknowledge the fact that people are dealing with different situations and so you have to figure out what works best for you. I would say that like with anything that you're using, you know, just think about the pros and cons to it. And if there are associated cons with a certain thing, think about whether or not you can use it in such a way that you can eliminate that potential danger. Example with the hair pins, bobby pins, you know. Yeah, bobby pins can puncture locks, and if you constantly do that, if you constantly create holes in your locks, and that can lead to weak spots. Well, how can I use them in such a way to avoid that? Maybe if I space it out, you know, open up the bobby pin and insert it away so that it encloses the lock versus going through the lock, then that's one way to get around such a potential problem. And yeah, I guess that's the end. So hopefully, Kimberly, I have answered all of your questions in great detail. Thank you so much for your questions. And as for the rest of you, if you have any more questions for me, please send them my way so that I can answer them and, and ask a tree video. As always, please learn to love unconditionally because loving with conditions conditions the heart to not really love at all. So betray you, it's out.